Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Days of Our Lives spoilers for the next two weeks, November 25th to December 6th, state that Joy Wesley will receive quite a scare when it seems like Alex Kiriakis might divulge her hookup secret to Chanel Dupree de Mera. Although Alex will be tempted to blab over the week of November 25th to 29th, he'll stay silent in the end and leave Chanel in the dark on Johnny D. Merrick cheating on her. E.J. D. Mera will also have some words of wisdom for Johnny, so he may urge his son to take his secret to the grave or risk losing Chanel forever. Later, Joy and Johnny will wind themselves stranded in another uncomfortable circumstance, so Chanel may issue a Thanksgiving invitation to Joy or anything along those lines. Speaking of Thanksgiving, the Kiriakis family will enjoy a delightful celebration that includes quite a feast. Sarah Kiriakis will also return home from the hospital with Xander Kiriakis at her side, and since Sarah is now starting to walk again, she'll have a giant reason to be grateful this year. Back with EJ, he'll press Gabby Hernandez to apologize for playing the blame game over her ruined marriage and slapping him in the town square. Will Gabby tell EJ she's sorry or dig her heels in on holding him responsible? Next, Day's rumors predict Chanel will tell Paulina Price some good news, so she may disclose that Lonnie Grant and Eli Grant are on their coming back to Salem with the twins. Eli and Lonnie will eventually come home for Thanksgiving, so they'll see numerous familiar faces when they're back in town. Elsewhere, Javi Hernandez and Leo Stark will confront another round of conflict. Although Leo might offer an apologies for leaping to the wrong conclusion, he may lash out when Javi refuses to accept it. As for Ray Fernandez, what will his career look like now that he's walked away from the Salem PD? Rafe will have some exciting updates for Jada Hunter, so remain with us for more predictions on his new path. In the meantime, let's speak about Chad DeMera and Cat Green's scheme to fool Clyde Weston. The idea is to use a couple of decoys, so JJ Devereaux may recruit Gabby to help out with that. However, there'll be a setback that'll change things up, so Kat and Chad will have to roll with whatever Clyde throws at them. While Jack Devereaux and Jennifer Horton Devereaux are visiting the Horton Mansion for Thanksgiving, Jack will find Doug Williams passed away in his bedroom. Jennifer will be charged with calling Hope Brady about her dad's demise, and then Hope will lean on Sean Brady as they grieve and prepare to return home for Doug's burial. Of course, Julie Williams will be impacted the hardest by the loss. Day's teasers claim Julie will share some heartbreaking farewell scenes by Doug's bedside. Kayla Johnson will also spread the news about Doug in the hospital, so she'll let Marlena Evans know what happened as they share a moment of remembrance for him. Marlena will also disclose a secret to Kayla regarding John Black, so she may admit she's getting anxious about his hush-hush ISA mission and location. Once John is no longer checking in with Marlena, she may have a bad feeling. During the week of December 2nd to 6th, Doug's funeral service and burial will bring many returnees as well as a surprise guest or two. The event will provide a poignant tribute to both Bill Hayes and the role he performed for so many years. As for Cat and Chad, will they finally get their Clyde plot back on track? After several difficulties and delays, Clyde may be ready for Chad to deliver Cat to him at a motel. If JJ and Gabby both wind up functioning as decoys for this trap as planned, Day's spoilers suggest they'll be putting their lives on the line. Finally, Marlena may appeal to Steve Johnson for help on John's disappearance. DOL fans should anticipate Steve and Marlena to work together to track John down in the following months, but this is all building to John's sad outcome. Days of Our Lives spoilers suggest Salem will have to mourn all over again down the road, so stay tuned. CDL's where you want to be for all the sizzling days of our live spoilers, predictions, updates and news you need, so stop by often for more DOL secrets. Kristen, I do desire a connection with you. As co-parents of Rachel. And hopefully, friends, Brady said. Kristen's smile evaporated. Friends? Kristen said. Brady indicated that despite their physical attraction to one another, they were not compatible as a romantic relationship. I know you know this as well as I do, Brady added. Kristen gasped. I can't believe this. Do you know what I have done? How far I've gone for you? Do you have any clue what it would mean to me to be the Demera heir who presented Titan Industries on a silver platter? Kristen yelled. Brady said he knew what Kristen had sacrificed, but she sneered at him. 
Kristen maintained that the board and her family would simply regard her as a love-struck fool instead of a leader. You played me. You never planned for us to get back together, did you? Kristen yelled. Kristen fought back tears as she reprimanded herself for having been so naive. This was all just a game to you, wasn't it? And I'm just the biggest loser, and you are enjoying every minute of it. Isn't that right? Kristen said. Brady tried to protest, but Kristen pushed on. You knew that I would do anything to reunite our family. You got what you wanted, Brady. You got it. And now you and Ava will be laughing your asses off behind my back, Kristen yelled. Whoa, what? Brady said. Kristen encouraged Brady to admit that he wanted to sleep with Ava. Brady shook his head with dismay. I am not in a relationship with Ava. I've had some chats with Ava. I'm not interested in her that way, Brady said. Kristen inquired why when he had a thing for wicked girls. Kristen mocked Brady about his involvement with Fiona. I can't talk to you when you're like this, Brady protested. Victim blaming, gaslighting. What more do you have in your arsenals there, Brady? Kristen countered. Brady attempted to walk away, but Kristen grabbed his arm. Not until I've had my say, Kristen hissed. Brady wrenched his arm free. You're making a scene, Brady growled. Kristen laughed loudly. I am grateful for what you have done for Sarah, but you and I are not good for one another. You know that, Brady said. Kristen claimed that they were not toxic but instead flawed individuals with a beautiful daughter. And that's why I just want to have a platonic, healthy relationship with you, for her sake, Brady answered. Kristen stated that Rachel wanted her parents to live together under the same roof. It can't happen, Brady stressed. Brady observed that Rachel would be okay. I will see to it that, Rachel, is fine. She and I will get through it, the two of us, and just the two of us, Kristen said. Don't think that I'm missing all the subtext with your tone of voice and the choice of your words. Kristen, for the sake of our young child, please don't punish me by keeping me away from our little girl again. You know it will hurt her as much as it will pain me, Brady said. Kristen smirked and assured Brady that she was not making any guarantees. At the hospital, a doctor examined Sarah. How soon do you think I can be up and walking again? Sarah asked. Slow down, darling. We want the physicians to undertake a thorough investigation first, Xander said. Sarah remarked that she was impatient and listed off a list of tests she wanted to undertake. I'll go set the wheels in motion, the doctor stated as he went out. When Xander told Sarah that she would not have to wait long, she nodded affirmatively. Because I'm going to try to walk right now, Sarah remarked. Xander said no. Maggie returned, and Sarah told her about their visit with the doctor. Xander highlighted that Sarah required a few tests and cautioned her to be patient. Sarah mumbled because she was bored of waiting. For the first time in a long time, things feel right, and positive, and hopeful, and that is why I don't want to wait. I want to walk. Right now, Sarah said. Maggie agreed with Xander that Sarah should wait for the doctor to approve. Sarah grudgingly agreed to wait. This is about your health. And I'm not going to condone you endangering your recovery by doing anything without your doctor's permission, Maggie said. Xander agreed. While Maggie stepped outside to chat to Bonnie, Xander persuaded Sarah to take a nap. Sarah claimed that she was too amped up to sleep, but Xander begged her to try. Sarah agreed. Xander made Sarah promise that she would not attempt to get out of bed. I'll be down the hall. Text me if you need anything, Xander said. After Xander left, Sarah joyfully threw back the covers from her legs. In the hospital hallway, Xander rejoined Maggie as she ended her chat with Bonnie. I just pray that this means that Sarah will be walking again soon, Xander added. Looks like your prayers have been answered, Sarah remarked. Xander turned back and found Sarah standing across the room with a cane. Sarah told Xander to keep back, and she took a few wobbly steps toward him. Xander clasped Sarah in his arms, and they laughed gleefully.